As I mentioned, the flipbook animation update hasn't been done in the most ideal way. Uh, this is very kind of manual on a per basis situation. We have to keep calling this same function. And again, that's not really ideal either. So what we're going to do is try and automate some of this process with something called an enum or enumerator, if you've not heard that term before. It basically, it means that we can create a different value, which can be tracked and represented by integer values. So it's very easy to iterate through and we'll have one enumeration state for each of the different states the player can be in. This means that we can store a state for the player based on what's happening and set the flipbook animation just once based on the state we're currently in. Again, as with anything, if you haven't seen this before, it will make a lot more sense as we go and create this now. So let's go back into our blueprints folder. This is essentially a type of blueprint. We find this by right clicking, going to blueprints and enumeration. I'm going to call this one E player movement. Notice here that there's no underscore. The naming convention for enums is E with uh, no underscore here, and then the name of what they're representing. Uh, you could call this something like E movement states, E player states, whatever you wanted. I think this kind of gets the idea across. And like I said, we basically want to come in here and we're going to create a new enumeration state. So you can see it's quite a broad, empty class that we have here. We can press the new button a few times and get a few different enumerators. They're just going to automatically name themselves. These are just kind of a named representation. And we're quite simply going to create one for each of the different states. So I'm going to rename these to idle, run, jump, and fall. Okay, so you'll notice that these are not associated with any anything. They're not providing a certain flipbook. We're not assigning anything to these. These are purely a representation to allow us to easily update the current state and conveniently track them as we go through our logic. We can give them descriptions if we wanted to, but that's not needed. And something that's usually a good uh, kind of practice to do as well is providing a kind of null or default state. So I'm going to add one more state and name this one default. Generally, if we ever hit this state, that means something's gone wrong. So this can be like a check that something has not been updated correctly. For some reason, this would be if, for instance, all of our movement checks have failed and we haven't returned that we're in any state at all. So that would mean we're like somewhere between idle, run, jump and fall, which is something we've not accounted for. So we're going to set this to default and I'm just going to click this arrow to move this up because generally this will be the first enum state that we provide. So if that done, we can close this. We now have our new variable, and that's what we're going to use, use this as is a variable type in our player class. So if we come down to the variables option, we'll click this. We'll name this movement state. And for the variable type, we want to use the drop down, find our E movement or E player movement. So the thing that we've just created and named ourself. And we can see now that if we drag this in, we get our variable pin. And if we do something like use our select node that we've seen a few times now, we can see that we can select things between default, idle, run, jump, and full. We could also set this as a variable. So again, ideally what you want to do, I'm gonna come in, I've alt drag this next to the event begin play, move this around a little bit. And we're just going to ensure that when the game starts, we're gonna set this to the default state. This kind of sets default anyway. But again, if we're ever testing anything, say we wanted to just test the jump, then we might forget to reset this at some point. So it's good to set this to a default to begin with. Then when we're updating our flip book, we will keep track of this and be updating this based on what the player is doing. So back inside of the flip book update, I'm gonna get rid of this for now. We can move this aside. We're going to reuse some of this as we go through, but most of this will be gutted and removed in just a moment. From the update flipbook, we can set the movement state again. And again, if you're not familiar with this, if we just set a variable here, it's going to create the execution pins between both of these. And we basically want this to be the return of a set of checks. So we're going to be very familiar by the end of this with our select node, as this can provide some really useful easy to read automated code in, in different ways. So what we want to do is we're gonna set this to be the return of a set of logic using our select node. Now the first thing we can check, again, we've got most of this ready to go. Uh, we can start by checking if the player's on the ground. So this is our grounded logic. So I'm just gonna control X and control V that down here. So we won't need this again, so we can just reuse it here. So what this is now saying is if we're on the ground, this is false, of course, that means we are idle. So we're gonna set this to uh, idle here on false. So we're gonna assume that we're not moving. That does leave us with some more logic that we need here. So this is going to be this true variable will be based on the return of the next select node that we use. So we we'll use another select node here. We can see it's passing through the movement state to all of these. So these pins are all expecting the E movement state. 
and what we want to do now is check whether or not we're falling. So if this hasn't been uh, the case, which means we're going to fall through and check the next select node, uh, we now want to know whether or not we're falling. So again, we can control X and control V so that we know that we're reusing and accounting for all of the movement states we've already looked into over here. So again, if this is true, we are falling. We already know that we want to know in which direction we're falling. So we can't set this to jump or fall because this could be two options. So that lets us know this is another select option here or another scenario where the select node is going to work. And that's going to be the return of this check here. So remember that was our positive or negative check for the vertical movement. So again, control X, control V. So we now have all of our checks. So we know that if this returns, we won't need any selects here. This means that if this returns true, then we are falling because we're going in a negative value just here. So we'll say uh, fall for true and jump for false. So that accounts for our jumping movement, the different options that can come from that. That leaves us with just one option here. So for this select, we know that this is not moving. So we've got idle. That means this would be moving, but on the ground, which means this is going to be our running logic. So we're going to go into the movement state of run. And then this is our falling logic. So we're going to be in the movement state of either jump or fall. So we can leave some comments here just so that we can easily come back to this a bit later. So we're going to say that this one is checking for the air movement. Specifically, I guess that would be the velocity in which we're moving. Failing that, we know that we're not in the air. So we're going to check for the ground movement. So we'll leave a comment here for that. And this one, if we're not moving in the air or the ground, then we're going to return idle. So some nice comments to come back to just to kind of remind us what these are doing. And the best way to think about these, if this is again completely new to you, is these are kind of falling through. So as this is being updated, the first thing this is going to do is going to select what movement type to set this to. So if the velocity isn't equal to zero, then we we're not just going to return false here. We're going to go and check the next select node uh, because that would mean it's true. And then we're going to check this logic. And then again, if that isn't the case, so if that's true, then we're going to go back and see what our final check scenario could be. And that's going to give us some type of air movement. So this will actually already be working if we had the final stage, which is going to be setting our flip book. And hopefully this is going to be the bit which kind of solidifies why this can be so useful. So we can now unhook all of this select just one of these set flip book nodes here. So control X, control V. Ideally, I would have brought the sprite with that as well. So we'll hook this sprite up into this. We'll plug this in here and we're going to use that useful select node one more time. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the flip book that we want to display based on our enum that we have tracked. So we'll pull from here again and type select. Quite simply, uh, this is going to be really, again, Quite interesting, I think, for those of you who might not have seen this before, but we can control drag in the movement state into the index. So we're going to get the state and we'll see that that will automatically read how many different states this has and provide a select node for each of those states. So that means that we can now set this flipbook just once based on what's being returned here. This is going to be a good tell sign again. So we're going to leave default empty, purposely leaving this empty. So again, if we ever see that our sprite isn't playing anything, then we know that something's gone wrong and we haven't updated a state. Otherwise, we can take all of these values that we've stored over here. We're going to plug the idle into idle, the jump into jump, run into run and fall into fall pretty much as you would expect, and then just make sure we can see them all. And that is really our state machine kind of set up and ready to go here to check for what to do with the player animation. It means we don't need all of this branching logic. We can get rid of all of these now. We'll be calling the set flip book function just once and passing in the result of whatever happens to our movement state and how that's tracked. So we can also see this in work a little bit here. I'm going to add one sequence down here and you'll see that this is updating constantly. So we can do a print string just so we can kind of visualize as well how this is operating. We can convert the uh, enum state to a string and this will, when we play this, keep track of this for us. So we're not pressing anything, which means we're in the idle state. Uh, if I jump, then we're jumping and then falling, jumping, falling and running. So all of this is being tracked based exactly on how that movement state is being updated and based on pretty much the same checks that we had previously. But rather than have, having branching checks going everywhere, we've now just got this one kind of logical flow of full through states based on what's being selected and the calculation being passed in to that select node. Then all of this is being finalized by setting the flipbook based on the current movement state. So again, very easy to read, very easy to manage. And this also means that if we ever wanted to add something else, if we added things like a double jump or a wall slide, all we need to do, we don't need to add extra branch statements. Usually you would need to interrupt another check somewhere else and it would really break the kind of flow of the logic that we had going over here. All we need to do 
is return to our movement state here. We'd add two new things. I would say wall slide and double jump. That would immediately add two new flipbooks just here. And then we could just run some other logic off of here. So again, if we're in the air and we're also wall sliding, then we'd have another select node to check for that and we'd return either jump, fall, or wall slide. Or if we're jumping and it's the second time we've pressed it, we'd return another select node here that we've just momentarily entered double jump, change that movement state. And again, this would all be updated pretty much automatically for us. There is no real like automated system for this, but I think this is kind of getting to that state where it's as kind of reusable and flexible as we can make it for this kind of project. So just before wrapping this up, make sure that we go back. We don't want this to sprint constantly. Uh, if you ever add another sequence, uh, another execution pin from the sequence, we can right click on this and remove execution pin. So we're now just doing the flip book and the rotation update. And as always, make sure that we compile and save this. We won't need the player movement to be open any longer. And I think that puts us in a pretty good state where the player is pretty much fleshed out. We have them doing everything that we want in the most robust way that I can think of doing it for a small project like this. I think what we can do now is we can move on to the interaction with other things for the health pickups and things to have any use or the enemies to really provide any kind of danger or hazard to us. We're going to need to start implementing a health feature. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.